Hi folks, this is the Prairie Fiddler coming to you from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Hope everybody's well out there tonight. Um, I uh, First of all, I want to announce that, uh, that I've created a Facebook page and officially named my business, uh, named at the Silky Strings of Saskatoon. So if you care to look that up on uh, Facebook, I don't really have much on it yet, but, uh, but there will be videos and uh, interesting articles, hopefully, as well as a link to my blog, uh, which is glenclarson.com. Anyways, um, so over the last couple of years, uh, since I got started in uh, tinkering around with violins and doing a bit of repair and restoring and, and uh, buying and selling, I've noticed that uh, there seems to be quite a demand as well as uh, quite a bit of confusion uh, among first-time buyers particularly. And so uh, I, got, I noticed that uh, uh, a large portion of or a large number of, of uh, first-time players or people considering uh, playing the violin, uh, they start out um, kind of tentatively, but they, they don't know where to start. And uh, so there's uh, there's uh, there's really only one major brick and mortar music uh, instrument store in in Canada. Anyways, I don't know. I I would assume there are more in the United States and elsewhere. But uh, so the one violin that they that seems to have become a standard because I think uh, probably largely because this company. Uh, rents these violins to to students to play, and uh, renting I guess makes a lot of sense and in, in, makes sense in a lot of cases because people are going to first of all you don't want to buy it unless you unless you know you're going to uh, to stick with it, but second of all you uh, as you grow you advance from let's say you maybe start out with a quarter size or a half size violin, and then. As you grow, you're going to advance to the next size up, obviously. You're going to go to the half and the three-quarter. Although uh, one gentleman I talked to uh, that seems to have a lot of experience thinks that uh, the jump from a half size to a full size is not uh, too big a stretch. So uh, anyways, I, I noticed that the, the standard for this, one of the major companies, seems to be uh, what they call the Stentor. And... Uh, let me uh, just explain. I think 90% plus of violins, uh, of, of new violins made in the world today, are made in China. Surprise, surprise. Uh, just like everything else. And that's not to say that they're necessarily bad instruments. Uh, they're, in a lot of cases, uh, they range anywhere from uh, are actually quite bad violins to some pretty fine violins, I think, although I've never really uh, played any or, or had any in my little shop. Uh, there's like the Ming Zhang Zhu and the uh, Scott Chow. Uh, there, there's some, I think, some pretty high-end violins. So uh, the only other, uh, for entry-level violins, the Chinese seem to have a pretty much a lock on the market. And uh, the next step up, and, and I don't know because I haven't really had them again in my shop, would be the uh, uh, the Romanians have a, a, a bit of an industry, and I think Hungary, Hungary maybe does. And of course, it's all related to labor costs, right? Because there's a lot of labor that goes into these things. So there again, China uh, has a big a big uh, leg up on everybody else. So the four violins that you're looking at here are all made in China, and I'm going to walk you through. I've, I've assembled them. Uh, for comparison purposes and I'm gonna walk you through them one at a time now these are only four of hmm, probably hundreds hundreds of different violins that you can buy um, but I'm gonna walk you through uh, the, the a, a description and the the uh, quality of each of these and I, I kind of plan on doing this uh, doing this video in segments so the first segment, I'm going to walk you through the violins and describe each one. Uh, then I hope to do a segment on uh, sound quality. And that's really everything in violins, right? I mean, sure, we want the violin to look nice and, and be, you know, sound and presentable. Although some of the old, the old uh, 
uh, old old violins are pretty neat but sound is everything and, and if you're starting out you don't know if you want to really you, you just want to try it well you really want to try you really want to try with the best instrument that you can afford so that's why i thought i'd do this trial and just see how the stentor which is kind of again the standard how it compares to some of the others that are in more or less the same range so first of all i scored this violin here it's uh it's uh, the brand name is corelli now the, the chinese like to give um italian sounding names to their violins i guess they they think it it helps to their saleability i'm sure so this corelli uh i think i've seen it on amazon for around uh 200 plus shipping uh maybe some taxes so i'm guessing that'd be around 250 dollars um oh it's it's a nice enough looking violin it's got although i think it's got uh, like a kind of a plasticky fingerboard uh, the fittings are mm, okay. Tighteners are good. Um, this one actually comes with a whole lot of stuff. Uh, it comes with two bows, a uh, pretty nice case. So the case is good enough. Um, what else? Oh, it's got a tuner, uh, rosin. It comes with a shoulder rest. So it comes with a lot of stuff. So you get a lot for your money there. Now, the... Uh, this one here, I scored a, uh, this is a, what they call a Stentor Student Violin 2. So they have a Stentor and they have a Stentor 2. So this is the better, the better one of their uh, Stentor line for uh, introductory level uh, violins. So again, uh, reasonably made. This is, they have a, a nice glossy finish. These varnishes are all spray applied so they're, they're they're very consistent and and uh again the quality of workmanship isn't too bad i think this one has a hard to say if that's ebony it could be just i think it's just a rosewood um fingerboard and uh a uh what do they call it carbon fiber tailpiece i guess so all in all doesn't look too bad uh, this one retails at about $340, and for that you get a bow in a case. They probably throw in some rosin too. So you get a bow in a case for $340 plus taxes, so you'd probably be up around $375, I'm guessing. So this one here, uh, again for comparison purposes, I imported this one myself from China. And it's, uh, the workmanship again is, is pretty decent. Um, the violin's got nice arching, and uh, this one has a matte finish. has ebony fingerboard and chin rest, ebony uh, tuning pegs, uh, nicely uh, fitted bridge. And uh, this one, well, I won't say what, uh, what I actually paid for that one, but uh, that's Part of the uh, this whole exercise so just for fun I threw this one in here and this is one that I just finished uh, myself it's from a from a white violin purchased again from China and this was my first uh, go at using a, an oil varnish so it's a hand applied oil varnish it has ebony fittings um, that's my shoulder rest there and uh, this one here um, I would probably retail for probably quite a bit less than what this Stentor is. And again, that one was 375 And uh, both of these violins will retail. Uh, I'll sell them out at quite a bit less. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, it, it's a pretty interesting exercise. I think you'll be, you'll be quite surprised. I'm, I'm not sure, 100% uh, sure if I can get the sound the differences to, to carry through into the video. Now you'll definitely tell the difference from the worst to the best. I mean that that will be unmistakable. But uh, anyways, I hope you uh, stay tuned for the next video. I'll try and get it out within a couple of days maybe, a day or two. And uh, this video I'll try and get up on my YouTube channel 
um, probably maybe by tomorrow. And uh, so that'll be on, uh, it'll be on glencelarson.com as well as it'll be on Silky Strings of Saskatoon on Facebook. Anyways, thanks for listening. I hope you find this whole exercise possibly useful if you're actually considering um, learning to play violin or even moving up to, uh, to the next level or um, perhaps you're playing a half size or a three quarter size and you want to move up to the next size. I think I can probably accommodate that. Anyways, stay tuned. Hope you enjoy. Have a good evening.